Yo, welcome Prony. So we are getting hit with update after update and today the patch 1.5 hit and I want to give you a brief overview of what's happening, what you should care for. So the first thing is we are getting the new battle pass. Sadly, it did not have the Halloween skin inside. But let me show you what else is there that I think has like a pretty decent value. We are having this new morph right here, a rabbit. Then the mystic key is actually a fairly decent value because it's always 100 abyssal tokens for sure and you also have a chance to get the mystic one for 500 so that will give you open world farm ability actually then we're having a new ami toy in the halloween style and we are finishing it off with the phantom tracker one of the first um, cs sets that was released in korea but the actual value which i think is making the battle pass an insta cop especially for only 500 lucent which is achievable for every free to play player so my clear recommendation is even if you're free to play you have to buy that battle pass you are getting a total of 100 100 trade unlock stones if you purchase it which i think is huge and to follow my own recommendation we are instantly buying it we are only going over the most important things first one here is that the speed bosses will now not have a set amount of portals that means the more people will attend an event the more portals will spawn to make sure that there is loot according to the amount of people that are participating. This will overall, I think, decrease the value of the items though. Then we are having the next one. That means that when you are killing a world boss, you will have a chance to obtain one of those chests and that chest will get you the option to select the reward of that field boss that you want. Important to notice here, those items are not tradable, but Besides the weapons, you can turn the armor that you're getting into litter crafts. So if you don't need anything from a world boss, make sure to check the auction house, which of those loots has the highest litter craft price. Then they fixed the abuse in the dungeon death abyss, which I think is good. I personally don't like this kind of exploit and it felt really weird if people were doing it without you having the ability to control it in your own party when you're doing the random matchmaking for the extra rewards now. Yeah, have that they fixed it next thing is the combat i was already ranting about it multiple times that the crowd control immunity they did was only designed so a tank could benefit from it everything else would die before it even procs and yeah we have to monitor now if those changes will actually help um reducing the ability to get cc change then they have done one change that i think is extremely important to have a better experience for new players they have increased the experience reward from completing the adventure codex. That means the main story quest line will now get you easier to level 50 without having to do all those extra quests on the site. They have also fixed the bug where you could go into the haunted labyrinth while the boss was already ongoing and you would basically just watch them kill the boss and you couldn't do anything. And that one is finally fixed. For guilds, it used to be that you could only see your guild reputation. That is the part that you're putting towards the guild leveling up. But many of the things like bidding on boonstones, castle siege, all of that is based on guild member activity points. There was no overview of it. A guild leader could not see what the members are doing and now they are giving that option. And I think that's really great for transparency. Now we're coming to a point that made me really, really happy because they've added the Queen Valandir and Tavern equipment items now so they can be crafted. So the recipes are unlocked. And I still remember lots and lots of people commenting below my Army Toy Expedition video, below my um, fishing video. You're saying like everything I'm saying there is bullshit, it's all wrong, blah, blah, blah. The stuff will never come. And here now one treating for the people that listen to the guide and followed it because the sex have been changed. I have keeping all the sex like I've mentioned it and you can see now in all the sex that I've been stacking up lately you will now find the Queen Belendir and Tavern Soul Fragments. So it was 100% working the way I said and it's now giving you a couple loose end advantage if you followed. Then for the movement, um, they have made it so it's easier to ch instantly change directions. That change, I've been already testing it a bit in the arena. For me personally, it helps quite a bit in dodging like bigger AOE attacks where I'm on an edge. Like for example, a tornado or a flash wave with my nimble leap and then walking um, towards um, changing my direction. So I really like that change here. 
And then the last change that has already resulted in a little rage of me on stream when I was not able to complete the Festival of Fire event and same with the Requiem of Light, so they have both been fixed and you should be able to get personal completion rewards now. Which is really nice, because also one of those loots at the Fire Festival is an army toy that will give you item chance percentage, so increase your drop chance with the PAL synergy. So really nice that we can finally farm that. And one UI change that I think was much needed for PvP is that the health bars are now showing the amount of shield that you are getting by skills, which helps a lot, especially if you edited your HUD the way I was explaining it in the settings guide, that you have everything close by here and you just get more information to play around with your PvP and to make qualified decisions. Yeah, guys, those were the most important changes with the upcoming update 1.5. But if you still have any questions, just let me know in the comments. As always, I will try to answer everything in less than 24 hours. Cheers, guys.